My name is Philip Wick. I'm a project leader here at the John Innes Center where we study how plants uh, sense ambient temperature. That is a non-stress uh, change in temperature. So the remarkable thing about plants is that they're extraordinarily sensitive. and They can sense a difference of one or two degrees Celsius and um, we really have very little idea of, of the signaling transduction mechanism by which temperature is sensed. Temperature is incredibly important for plants and probably because they're sessile so they can't move so they must adapt their development as they grow according to the climate. Interestingly however there's very little has been understood at the molecular level of exactly how temperature is sensed and how this, uh, these signals are integrated into development. So we were essentially starting with a blank canvas. This is a particularly interesting time to be studying how plants sense temperature um, because a number of studies have already shown that small increases in temperature that have already occurred in the last hundred years through climate change have already had a measurable effect on plants' behavior. Plants have already sensed and they're already responding to uh, the one or two degrees C change in, in mean global temperature that's already occurred. And of course, in the future, much larger differences are projected. So we are probably going to see an increase of about four to six degrees centigrade in the next hundred years. So this will have an enormous effect on um, both wild plants and crops. And a particularly important um, uh, issue is food security. So we know from um, a wealth of previous studies the warmer summer temperatures are particularly dangerous for major crop plants such as wheat and rice. And so in summers where we've had a warmer temperature, for instance 2003, there's been a precipitous drop in the yields of key um, crops like wheat. So in 2003, for instance, in affected areas, wheat yields were down about 16%. So climate change is really going to be a major disturbance for food security and in order to address these problems we'll need methods of breeding plants that are resistant to hotter temperatures and one way to do this if one knows the molecular mechanism of how temperature is perceived is to then use a targeted approach to deliberately design plants that are resistant to climate change. We first started out characterizing how in a molecular level how plants respond to temperature in terms of its transcriptional response. So we characterize the ambient temperature transcriptome in anabrobsis using genome-wide microarray analysis. And we found that there is a defined subset of genes that are regulated by ambient temperature. And we identified a specific gene, HSP70, which is a measurable output of ambient temperature. So with increasing temperature, HSP70 expression increases. So what we used was to use the HSP70 promoter and fuse it with the reporter gene luciferase. So in the reporter system, then you have a plant that is able to tell temperature in a way that with increasing amount of luminescence. So you can, looking at the plant, you can say what temperature that is sitting at if you measure the luciferase activity. So this is an important tool that we can use for a genetic screen to identify mutants that are perturbed in the temperature perception phenotype. So we identified a number of mutants which are unable to perceive the change in temperature or are rather not perceiving temperature properly. The mutant that we are talking about in this paper is enhanced temperature response one mutant. This mutant was remarkable in, in terms of its its phenotype that it phenocopied warm ground plants, that it showed all the phenotypical, the developmental and the architectural phenotype that are otherwise attributed to plants that are growing at higher temperature. So we identified this mutant as a deletion in AP6, that is actin-related protein 6. Surprisingly, we found that these mutant plants do have a constitutive warm temperature transcriptome, indicating that what we found is a key regulator of ambient temperature regulation in plants. So the most striking uh, result um, when we were analyzing the behavior of the mutant was that essentially the entire temperature transcriptome was misregulated. And what that meant was that any model we come up, came up with had to explain how you had such a large number of genes that were both up and down regulated. Ultimately the model we've come up with suggests that it's the accessibility of the DNA that's wrapped around the nucleosomes that changes in response to temperature. So we identified this mutant as a mutation in the actin-related protein 6 that is a member of the conserved protein complex that is depositing variant histone H2A into chromatin.
the finding that H2 acid is involved in temperature perception itself. H2 acid has been known to be involved in regulating gene expression and it has been characterized and been explained in several systems. But what we are coming at is that H2 acid in Arabidopsis and in other systems that we have shown is involved in regulating gene expression in a manner that is dependent on ambient temperature. It's a particular property of H2 acid containing nucleosomes that they have a wrapping which appears to respond to temperature. And we found this um, in vitro. So if we purify nucleosomes containing H2AZ and we incubate these at different temperatures, we find the degree of wrapping and unwrapping changes a little bit with temperature. So our model for how H2AZ controls the ambient temperature transcriptome suggests that it is the wrapping of the DNA around the nucleosome that actually responds to temperature. So if you imagine at cold temperatures, the DNA is wrapped more tightly around the nucleosome, this would help us understand how genes are switched off at lower temperatures. As you now increase temperature, you cause progressive unwrapping of the DNA around the nucleosome. And this enables transcription factors to access cis-regulatory elements and switch genes on. So the model makes a number of quite um, specific predictions about how nucleosomes should behave at different temperatures. And uh, we've got a number of experiments now where we're testing this. The other thing we're very interested in is the extent to which this is a conserved mechanism. So preliminary results in budding yeast suggest that budding yeast use the same signaling mechanism as, as, as plants. And that would suggest that this mechanism may actually be conserved across all eukaryotes. So what that tells us is that we may well be able to use these genes in crop plants to change how crops um, sense temperature. If we can do that, then we may be able to breed crops that are resistant to climate change.